everyone. Welcome back. I just want to take a second and load our video and our comments. Here we go. And I'm going to turn my volume off on my other phone. Perfect. I'll give everyone a second to come in. And a couple of people wanted to be tagged. So I'm just going to take a second and do that. And here we go. It's just taking me a second, guys. There we go. Perfect. I tagged a couple people. And we can get right into this. So basically, I have everything I need in front of me. And I did post um, a list of everything that we're going to be using. So tonight, we're going to be making our own washi tape out of scotch tape and alcohol inks. But um, I was very much inspired by Teresa and by Tammy, um, who posted some of the ones that they did. But I took this to a whole different level. I have watched a few of Tim Holtz's videos of how to use his alcohol inks, so I want to share my entire process of what I've done, um, how I made these ones. And it's just so much fun. So if you guys have alcohol inks in some of these products, um, I recommend, highly recommend you make some. So I wanted to share a couple things, first of all. They are absolutely 100% stuck to my tape. They're not coming off. Um, I could even take like my nail and I could scratch. You guys can see this, and they are not coming off. So I've had a couple questions. Do they do they scratch off or peel off of your tape? Nope. They are completely resilient to that. And um, the only thing I recommend when you're making these is that you don't do what I did here, where you're putting them to the full length of your deli sheet or your parchment paper. When you do that, it's harder to get them off. So the ones that are easiest to get off are the ones that are like this, where I didn't stick them right, right to there. So I wanted to share this. Once you have these done, they are very much sticky, like 100% sticky, and they're translucent. So you can see through these. So I could use these um, over top of something that has darker writing, or I could use them on book pages, I can use them on my projects, and whatever is underneath them, as you can see like this, it's going to shine through. So I just wanted to share that. Um, I've had a lot of comments and requests for a video, so thank you guys so much. I have lots of new um, subscribers to my YouTube channel and to group. Um, end of the request for, for the video on how to do this. So thank you guys so much for your responses and the groups that I post, posted these in. They're a lot of fun to make. So I want to go quick, quickly through the, the products that you're going to need. So you're going to want some kind of, a, of um, a sheet that's shiny. This has a matte side and a shiny side. So put the matte side down and the shiny side up. For deli papers, you can use parchment paper, you can use wax paper, anything that you're going to be able to take your tape and you're going to be able to peel it off without it sticking. So again, here's another one, guys, of what it looks like when you peel it up. Just amazing. And this one is more, more so. It's very much, you can really tell that it's um, transparent. So it depends on how thick you're putting your inks. So that's the other factor. I want to share all my tips and, and, and my um, recommendations as we go um, with these because there was um, different things that I tried that worked really great and other things that I tried that didn't work really great. So I'm going to show you guys some things when it comes to that. So again, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get our piece of deli paper and we're just going to flatten it. Hi, Jenny. Thanks for joining. So again, tonight we're going to make our... Um, full washi tape from scotch tape and I'm sticking mine to a deli sheet. So I've had a lot of um, mixed um, con confusion with this as well. Um, this is in, we're basically what we're doing is we're taking our scotch tape, we're sticking it down to our deli papers and we're going to um, 
we're going to alter the actual tape itself. But what I do want to do is get this completely in focus so I'm not moving around. So I'm going to go right to the frame of our screen so I can tape my deli sheet down so you guys will be able to see this entire process. So I'll make sure this whole thing is in frame so you guys can see perfectly. Yeah, that should be good right about here. Just move that around a little bit. And I'm going to tape my four corners. One, so this isn't moving. Two, three, and four. And as I mentioned, for the best results with this, um, we do not want to go from exact side to exact side with our with our tape. We want to leave a little bit of room so that you're able to easily peel it up. Um, as I mentioned, all these ones here that I've done that are towards the center, they're going to peel up easier than these ones here where I've gone to the full edge. And same with these ones, they peel up quite easily, but these two are difficult because I've gone edge to edge. So that's the only thing I recommend for this part of it, not to put them edge to edge. Hi Judy, thanks for joining. Hi Tina. So now I want to take my scotch tape, and so I want to basically do this in a way where I can kind of measure, and I'm not going completely side to side. So here's my first piece. And then also the other thing I want to make sure is I'm giving myself enough space in between them so that I can get enough of, um, that I can get enough of a, um, of a stamp in between them. So I just wanted to show that as well. And they can be pretty much the length of this. They don't have to be. I'm just kind of going to piece these in. Um, see, this one's a bit shorter. Let's do this one towards the top here. So that one's a bit shorter here. Oh, but again, we don't want to go right to that edge. Well, it's okay. I can peel it from here. So again, we'll just try to go like that. So this one goes right off the page. All right, we can cut this back because I don't want them like that. I want them more here. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to cut this one a little short. Um, I'm not using anything special, guys. This is just... Um, Scotch tape that I have from left over from Christmas from doing um, gift wrapping. So I just wanted to share that. And it says right on it, it is the purple one scotch and it's satin finish. So I just wanted to share that. I'm not using anything special. I'm just using like um, a scotch tape. So I'm leaving a little bit of a quarter of an inch, I would say, gap between each piece of tape here. So it's not... Um, it's not too much, but it's enough that I'm going to be able to get stamps on my, on my, um, in between my, see this one's a bit shorter. It's okay. We're just going to kind of keep working in strips and it doesn't matter um, exactly how long they are. I'm getting close to the end of this roll. I do have more, so I'm not too worried about running out, but I just wanted to do this as quickly as possible and I wanted to share the entire process with you guys so you guys know exactly what what I'm doing okay so now that I have my tape down and it doesn't have to be perfect guys I have a little wrinkle here so what you know just as long as we're mostly down because that's the idea we just have to have that really good stick to our deli paper so for this method you can use parchment paper deli paper wax paper anything that has a non-stick surface basically, so that we're not going to stick this down and pull it up and it's going to be like putting it on a book page where we're, when we peel up our tape, we have the whole book page stuck to it. So you want to make it that it's going to peel off almost like a sticker. So it's kind of like making your own sticker. Now, what I wanted to share, if you're in Canada like me, you cannot go to the store and get rubbing alcohol in a, in 99% or 90% or higher. When we go to the store here in Canada, we end up with something like this, which is 70%, 72%, 74% um, rubbing alcohol. So I just wanted to share. Um, I was able to get some, and it's weird that it is made in Canada because our pharmacies and our stores don't carry it higher than 70 to 74%. But if you go on Amazon, you can get it in above 90%. So for this, you're going to want it above 90 um, 
the one below 75, 74%, anything lower than that is not going to activate your alcohol inks or um, any of the techniques for mixed media. So I wanted to share that. And that's why even with my infusions and doing some of the different techniques I was doing, I wasn't getting the same results because my alcohol concentration level wasn't high enough in the um, the isopropyl or the rubbing alcohol that I was trying to use. So basically when I ordered this, it came with two bottles exactly like this, 473 milliliters for $12. And it came with a bottle like this on Amazon. So what I did, I just, that's all I've done guys, is fill the bottle filled with um, rubbing alcohol. So I'll put that aside. But what I found to take this a step further is that when I spray, it's not like a distress mister. This is like, it's going to, soak my entire page so it's really hard um, to get a concentrate of it just in one little area so what I've done and this is what I recommend you guys do for our mixed media products I've picked up mini misters so they come in a set of three they are from Ranger Inc and I have three so I have one that I have loaded full of water for mixed media I can put that aside we're not using it I have one full of my alcohol, which is this one, my 99% proof. So that's what I'm going to be using tonight, the alcohol. And the other one is vinegar. I have some other products that I mix with vinegar, and I'm going to be demoing those. So those are the three products I would be putting in my mini misters. Water, one, one with vinegar, and one with alcohol. And just label them so you know which is which because they're all clear. So that being said, we're going to do this now um, step by step, one by one, and then we're by the time we, we they dry very fast. So by the time we get from the the bottom to the top, um, we'll be able to go to the back to the bottom and start the next one and go all the way up and start the next thing. So that's how we're going to work in our layers. So the first thing I want to do is remove my cap, and I'm going to give these a mist. So I'm not like looking to soak them. If you guys can see that, that's a mist. So that's all I'm going to do for my uh, rubbing alcohol. Just mist it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start using my alcohol inks. So the alcohol inks that I have, and this can take a second to dry, it's fine. I have turquoise. And these are all the regular alcohol inks. These are not pearls. Because the techniques that I'm going to be starting with, you have to use regular alcohol inks. You can't use mixatives or pearls because the lift techniques will not work. So I just wanted to share that. So the first thing we're doing, we have turquoise and patina. Those are my blues and my blue-green. And then I have sienna. And I have sepia. I have mushroom. And I have latte. So those are my six. These are the first six that I've started with. And I have copper mixative. So I absolutely love this color, guys. It's so incredible. And I know you couldn't really see it from the photos. So I'm hoping to at least be able to catch some of this on camera. So that's what I've done here. This gold coppery color here, that copper is the mixative copper mixed with um, sienna. So that's how I got this really rich coppery color here. And then the one up here that looks more like a coppery penny, like a shiny penny. If you guys, there we go, we can see that now. These ones up here are just the mixative alone. Um, on top of the alcohol ink. So I just wanted to share that. So that's what we're going to do first. So the mixative comes later. We're just going to use our alcohol inks. Now we're going to get two completely different um, techniques. And I will show you guys. So I'm going to grab a, a clean. And I'm using the alcohol ink applicators from Tim Holtz. So I'm going to come in and pick one up. Just like that. So I've taken my... I've taken my sponge off from doing my distress and I have on here a piece of felt. So same with watercolor painting guys we start with our lights first and then go into our darks. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, these ones you do not have to shake but you do have to shake the copper because that's kind of like um, the copper is very much um, like like treat it kind of like a mica where you're going to have to um, you're going to have to shake it first. So again, um, so this is two completely different methods of doing this. So to get a lighter and a more translucent look, I'm going to take my blending tool 
and then I can just blend these out. And this is going to also give me more, and you do like a pouncing motion, and these are going to give me more of like um, a lighter background. Something that's a little bit more translucent. My tape only goes to here. And again, you can just keep adding little dots. So if we want something that's lighter, that's the kind of effect that you're going to get by just by dabbing it and kind of blending it across your surface. So that's one method. This is the method that I prefer where we do dots like this. And we're just letting them fade out. And then I'm going to come in with sepia. Again, we're going to do one at a time, guys. So now I'm going into sepia. And I'm adding a dot here. And a drop there. And a drop here. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with sienna. And this is kind of what I want, guys, for them to kind of blend together. So I've already got my alcohol down. Here we go. And again, you can do bigger splotches and kind of move it around. One of the tools that I highly recommend that I don't have and I haven't used yet is the, um, the hand squeeze pump that Tim Holtz uses for moving the alcohol inks around. I think that's going to be game changer for this and probably um, several of his other um, products and different things that we can we can alter using our alcohol inks so that's going to be a tool that I would say is a must-have so it is on my next um, my next purchase so we we'll just start filling it in and I do love that latte but I don't like how light that is so that's just what I wanted to share if you guys can see and it dries fairly quickly so then what we're gonna do is just get these like sort of bled in techniques just by by adding and then what we want to do is take the other thing I like to use like I said is q-tips so this is a great way just to sort of if you don't like something you can kind of blend it if you guys see that we can kind of kind of blend or push things a little bit to fill in areas or just like that and then I want to keep in with a tur um, we'll start with turquoise so the colors that I've pretty much gotten, you guys know me, I'm more into things that are vintage looking and um, grungy. So my colors are the blues and the, the browns and the reds and this sort of thing. Yes, Tina, you can use deli paper, you can use wax paper, you can use parchment paper. Any of them, uh, your tape will not permanently stick to it. It'll peel off like a like washi tape or a sticker. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm super happy with this and then I can come in and I can, so what I want to do for this technique with the patina is just to come in and kind of use it as like a filler anywhere where I feel like I haven't, um, haven't coated my tape. I can kind of come in like this and add like little splotches just like that. So I'm going to let that one dry. Um, so you don't have to go crazy with the amount of colors either. So like this one here, I've done the whole length of this. So let's like do bigger blobs because I have my alcohol down. So this one here, I wanted to show you. I have Tim Holtz blending solution. So this is great too. Now the difference between blending solution and your isopropyl um, rubbing alcohol, this contains resin. And this is going to blend, so the, so the rubbing alcohol is going to blend it by thinning it and moving it along. Your alcohol blending solution has resin in it. So this is going to make it permanent. So anywhere where I put, um, you're going to see this effect though. It's really amazing. So that's going to give me this whole other thing where with the blending solution, it's going to probably play better and it's going to wick out easier when I start adding the other colors and different things to it. But the only problem with that is it becomes permanent because it's resin, so I can't use the lift inks on it. So I just wanted to share that. And then the other thing you can do too, because again, I don't have the um, 
the pump, I could pull up a corner like this, and then I can I can tilt it. If you guys can see that, that's kind of what I did with the other one too, where I started tilting my page and then the inks bleed. So that's another way to get them to move. Okay, I want to do mushroom. Um, just right in here, just a nice. Yep, and same thing. I want to see if you guys can see that it kind of bleeds, and we just let it do its thing. And if I want to thin that out and I don't like how that plays, I can just add a little bit of blending solution. And we can just, yep, keep moving it. See? If you guys can see that. I want to go back in with Latte. So this is just a matter of us playing with it and adding our colors in. So I'm really liking the Latte more or less with this one. And then the same kind of effect, I'll show you guys, when you add the alcohol, it thins it. So your alcohol is just going to see, if you guys can see that, and where we put the alcohol. And it's not overly controlled because, again, it's a mister, but it's better than the other one. The other one sprays the whole entire thing at once. So again, this is just going to lighten it up and make it that I can blend and move it. So I can go almost the full length, if you guys can see this. I can go almost the full length, here we go, of this one here. And it's good because you want it translucent in some places. There we go. So I'm going for that more sort of grungy kind of look. There, so that's perfect for the first one. So again, this is just our first layer because again, we've got mud happening here and that's okay. This is all kind of hit and miss every single time and you never really know what you're gonna get. So we're just going to keep going until we have our first layer down on each of these. Oh, that one's right off the paper. Again, a little bit of alcohol. And I want to, there we go. Let me come in and blend that a little better. Just like that. Okay, I've taken too much off, so we're going to come in with latte. So I want to come in with something a little lighter. There we go, just to kind of blend it in. And we can lift this and just move it along. Same with here. So this is essentially just to cover it. For our first layer because again when you first start out guys it looks like a hot mess but we just have to keep going with it and you're gonna see how I build these layers there so that's technically our first our first layer and we've pretty much covered that whole entire thing and our next piece of tape starts up here yeah so again we can so you can do this lightly if you want to to create a small thin layer or we can, again, just keep dr dropping um, our droplets on, just like that. And I've got that nice layer of alcohol across here. And we stop right there. I just don't want to add too much. Okay, and I'll come back in with my latte. I really like these colors together. They seem to play nice. And it just creates that nice vintage look. And then this one here I like too, sepia. It's a nice brown color. Okay, and I'm going to lift both sides like this up. Here we go. So then we can start pulling it. And then we can add a drop here. And we start pulling it, if you guys can see. So it looks like it's pulled. And then we take a lighter color and start from the top. And we can pull it in. And as you guys can see with that rubbing alcohol, it's allowing me to create those layers. So now that we're towards the center, we can kind of get it going like that. And then anywhere, again, that we have little bits missing because we just kind of look, I look up towards my light to see where I'm missing little bits. And that's where I can just come in and add extra alcohol ink. So again, this, this is the very first preliminary layer, guys. I'm just going to keep going across and we'll just keep just trying to save some time here too. 
So we can just kind of keep going. It doesn't matter how this first layer looks. There we go. But I do love that latte background. So we're just going to kind of keep going with it for that first layer. Because it doesn't matter what it looks like. Because we're going to lift it and we're going to put more layers on top. And I'm going to show you guys that. So the next one, yeah, let's add some sepia. It's that nice brown. Here we go. And we need it like right along here and here. There we go. And here. There. Let it run. Okay. And then we can add some sienna. I'm really loving the sienna. If you guys can see that, and how the colors just kind of blend and mix together. Okay. And I'm not worried about this being perfect either, guys. So if I'm missing spots, great, because I'll show you. And I very much worked in layers with, with um, the other ones. The other ones were about between five and seven layers, some of them. So I just wanted to share that, and they did. They looked like a hot mess when I first started. And I wasn't really sure, you know, when you have a new product and you start second-guessing second yourself. But then you push yourself and you say, okay, um, the more that we play with these and the more layers that we make, um, the better it's going to be. So that's one of these products. At first it might look like a hot mess, but you just have to give it a chance. So now I've gone with sepia, sienna, and I'm going to go back in with latte. Mushroom is very dark, so I don't want to do that too, too much yet. Because and even with the blues, I'm going to add them as accents later. So now I can do that. Here's patina. So I'm going to just kind of, because I don't want to change my color tone too much either. So I can just kind of add these in here and there. And it gives me kind of like a basis for where I'm going to stamp later too. And this is great because this gives me like a whole, so that's what I want to do, just start dribbling it like up here and let it run down that whole side here where I have the tape there we go so yeah at first they do guys they look like a hot mess but I'm going to show you how to build these layers and it is amazing and they do look quite amazing so these ones will be more like a greeny sort of blue there we go and again, if I feel like um, I want it to run a little bit better, I can just put the, again, a little bit more blending solution, and then they're going to run. Here we go. And it also thins it out. So that's the other thing, too. And then I have turquoise. So let's go ahead and add some turquoise in here, because I'm loving that blue. I want to embrace that on some of these, too. Here we go. And it's just a matter of having a little patience and just adding them in here and there. And you got to be careful too, because some of these colors will make mud when you're adding them. So we don't want to do too much of that. And then I can just, so see, perfect. I'm, I'm tacky over here. I'm not dry, but the lighter you go, the quicker they dry. So these ones that are tacky, I'm just going to leave them be to dry. I'm going to have a harder time lifting that when it's thick. And I'll show you guys that. So that's not going to lift very far. And that's okay. So this will be a good one. And I can show you that right now. So that's what I find. If you get mud, that's why I wanted to do this on purpose. If you add too much of your um, alcohol inks to... That's the adding solution. If you add too much um, alcohol inks to one area and you get mud, that's when I'm going to come in with my copper mixative. So again, I'm taking the mix copper mixative. Now, Tim Holtz mentioned um, that you need snow cap to blend, to blend your mixatives, and that's not true. So I just based, I don't have snow cap, and I just used it, and I wanted to see how it worked. So I just wanted to share that as long as you've got your alcohol inks down and like look at that color, it is fabulous. So as long as you've got your alcohol inks down, 
you can pretty much come right in with your mixative and just, and you guys kind of see where the magic happens. It's just super amazing. So I'm not going to get too much of this to probably to lift off, but I can just start like adding copper accents and then I can just let it pull down right in there just like that. And if you guys can see, it's just amazing. And that's going to sit on your top surface. So for these ones, I'm not going to do that yet for all of these. I want to go in because this here is like a top coat sort of thing. Um, you can't lift it. So this is the next part that I want to show that's so fun and amazing. And actually, I want to get a little bit more inks down on here before we do that. Because I just feel like that's just blank here and here. And here okay we don't want them blank we want them like filled in and that's the other thing too we can go in and we can just take another alcohol ink and go in as a filler once things start to dry so the thinner your layers are with the inks at, at each time the easier it's going to be to get things to to dry and to blend so I just wanted to share that so I'm happy with that this one's mostly dry so this is how we're going to kind of work, just kind of back and forth. So now I have Tim Holtz Ranger Alcohol Lift Ink. Now, Tim mentions the best product for lifting your alcohol inks is to get these paper towels. They are by a company called Viva. They're an American product. And as you guys can see, they are super thick. So these are, I would even say, thicker than Bounty. And they don't have, um, you want to do it that way, where they don't have a pattern on them, where it's just like this. And they are not cold paper towels. They're called a multi-surface cloth by a company called Viva. And they're, yeah, Viva Towels Multi-Surface Cloth. And I bought these on Amazon. So they are thick, and you're just going to kind of do, like, a method like this. So now what we want to do is go through our stamps and we are going to pick some background stamps. So a couple of my favorites, this one here is Seth Apter, um, Electica EM55, one of his small ones from, I believe this is set three, yeah, his set three. There's eight stamps in each set and I picked up the entire set three and I have a few from set four. So basically, we're playing with a little black background stamp. They're created by Paper Artsy and they're designed by Seth Apter. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this directly into my alcohol lift ink. Now, we are going to want a piece of paper or a piece of cardstock. And this is important because this is for cleaning off our stamps. And I don't have either, so you know what? For me, I have a book page right here. And that's fine. I've spilled some coffee on it. And that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to take my piece of paper and just put it beside me here. So I have it. And we're going to close our lift ink. So we have it all over our stamp. And just like how I would with Ranger Archival or anything else, we're going to start adding our lift ink. So we're going to start here. And I love this stamp. So this is how I'm going to get impressions into my background. So I'm just going to do it one at a time. So I've got my lift ink on there, and then I'm going to grab my paper towel, and I'm not going to wipe, I'm going to dab, just like this, and then you guys will be able to see the magic happen, and I'm going to come a little closer for this, so you guys can see the magic, and we just keep dabbing, and this is just a matter of having a little bit of patience. We've got our alcohol lift ink on there. And if you guys can see, I'm only picking up where I have the lift ink on here. Just like that. And slowly, you're going to see that pattern appear on the tape.
And then we're going to come in with another portion of that stamp and we're going to hold it for a second and we're going to lift it off and we're going to do the same thing and we're going to keep moving. So now we can really see that where it's on that dark. If you guys can see that. So that's how I start with putting a pattern onto the, the tape. So now I want to take my stamp. I want to take a second and I want to stamp off onto my piece of paper or cardstock. And then what's going to happen is all that alcohol ink is going to come off. So that's what you want to do. You want to keep your stamp clean as you go because you do not want the alcohol lift ink or the ink to stick to your stamps. You want to be able to smudge that off. And this will be cool because I can use this for collaging later. So I can keep that alcohol ink on here in whatever pattern it is and build up my layers as I'm stamping off um, as we go. So I just wanted to share that. And then now this is clean. And I'm able to put this right back into my alcohol lift ink, the whole thing. Because it does dry fairly quickly, just like your um, isopropyl alcohol. Here we go. And we're just going to come into the next one here. And then I can come into the next one here. And then I can come into this next one here. Like that. And, oh, and then I have that whole one side right here. And we'll tilt this this way and that way and I can dab that off over here and then I'm going to take paper towel and I'm just going to keep dabbing like this all the way down Whoop. so that was a little bit wet there that's okay and every one that you make is going to be different no two are ever going to be alike. Even I've used the similar products, the same colors, similar products for, and the same stamps for each one. Um, I'm going to get something totally different every single time. So again, anywhere that doesn't want to play nice, like I'm finding that, I want to say, not Sienna. I think it's Sepia that's not playing nice. It does not like to be lifted. I've noticed that. Same with on this one here too, guys. But that's okay, because if you see, anything that doesn't embrace our lift technique is going to take is going to take the Ranger Archival ink. So I just wanted to share that. And even these ones here, as much as they're opaque, they're also translucent when they're dry. So I'm going to be able to stamp over all of these very simply. So I just wanted to share that too. So that's no big deal. I'll be able to embrace that with black ink later. So again, I've got my bits and pieces of my stamping here. So I'm loving that where I have it here. And then I can stamp off onto my sheet of paper. There we go. And I could do another one in, in this, but what I actually really want to do, and this is one of my favorite um, results that I've had. I'm going to just go right into his other stamps that I have here. So this is his um, Paper Artsy Seth Apter ESA35. These are his full sets. And I absolutely love these two here. So that's this one and this one here that says Imagine. So these two we're going to be using. This one I'm going to be using as a background stamp. And this one here I'm going to be using. Sorry, guys. There you go. Um, this one here I'll be using as a background stamp. And this one here I'll be using as um, one of the focal points like I did on the other one. So again, we're just going to come right in and I'm going to put that into the alcohol lifting. And this was one of my favorite ones. It looks kind of like a glitch. So I use Seth After stamps for all of my backgrounds. And then I use some of his and Tim Holtz for the, um, the main focal. So I'm going to lift you guys up just a little bit here so you can still see what I'm doing. And we're still in frame, but you're closer. There we go. So make sure that's good. Okay. I don't want you too far away that you can't see what I'm doing. All right. So now I've inked this whole thing up in alcohol lifting. And now we're going to just come in one piece and two pieces there. Okay. 
and I'm just going to take this here and fold it a different way. Um, yeah, that's good, probably like this. Here we go, just like that. And then I can start lifting. Because I don't want to touch the other one too much. I just want to be able to come in here and lift. And that's where I've gotten those dots. So you guys can see that from the other stamp that I did over here with the with these. That's how I got those those dots. So I just wanted to show that. So again, we're just gonna And you got to keep so it does take quite a while you have to have lots of patience and you just slowly if you guys can see that now that's lifting and we're getting this totally amazing pattern that's going to end up translucent right across our tape so i just wanted to share that so again i've taken that and i've um stamped it down to get the access off and then I'm going to come in and then I'm going to pick it up again I really like that pattern here and we're going to come right across here like that just like that okay and we're going to dab it just to see what we get sorry guys I got a little cat hair right here that's not too good there we go I have to watch our, our new kitty. He loves my desk. <laughs> He's into everything. He's um, five months old. And he's so soft and sweet. The girls absolutely love him. He's such a nice kitty. He came to us in a blizzard. And um, we took him to the vet. He's perfectly healthy. Nobody's reported him missing. And um, so we've decided to keep him. And he has a good clean bill of health. And he goes back for another appointment at the end of the month. Because he's six months old and we're going to get him um, spayed. But he's doing really well. And it's funny because he was really small when we got him. And now he's like three times the size that he was when we got him. So he is growing. There we go. So we have some of our lift there. And then I have more. And you can kind of, and this is what I do to tilt it in the light, to kind of see where I have more, um, more lifting. There we go. And we just keep lifting. And I keep moving my paper towel around. There we go. And it takes a few times. So I really like those, and we're just going to keep going. And I don't have to be consistent across the whole thing. I just like, again, bits and pieces here and there. And where I really want this to shine is up here where I have all this blue. So I wanted to do some that were more um, that sort of... Whoops, I just slipped it. That's okay. That'll give me a whole different effect. Because I slipped with the stamp. Yep, that's okay. Um, these will give me almost like a window effect. There we go. And there we go. We can see what that's happening there. And I want some more lifting right across here. Yep. Okay. So that's our first layer where we have some lifting. So I'm really happy with that. And again, we'll go up in the corner. So as I mentioned, guys, some things you're going to love right away. And some things are going to be not so much. So this is kind of where we can go and we can critique it and we can start adding more alcohol ink down on anything that we don't like. And we just add that extra layer before we stamp. So this is just what I like to do. And then we make it, we make it perfect and the way we want it. So again, we might feel like we want to add some, some blue here. 
So now I can do that. And it's mostly dry. So I'm not worried too much about... Um, no, I'll lift it here. And we can... There we go. Add some blue. Just like that. Anywhere where we have like a blank spot. Just, yep. That's perfect. And then have it come like this. This is what I like to do, guys. Just ever so slightly just um, fill in blanks. Anywhere where you feel like you don't have um, enough stuff on part of part of your tape. Um, I'm not too worried about that because we're going to cover it. This here needs more going right down here. I'd like to make that a little bit more vivid. There we go. Again, that's the whole part here. And where this is really going to shine is when we start adding our stamping. And again, I can go in with more latte. This is one of my favorite colors, and it's light. So this is great for, um, again, adding like a little bit of like a, um, in your blank spots, anywhere where you feel like something's missing, or um, you don't like something, you can just kind of add some other stuff in here and there, and just embrace that. There we go. And I'm just tilting my papers, and that's how I'm getting that effect. And I'm going to do the same thing. So anywhere where I feel like it's super dark and I don't really love it. Um, now here's another little trick. So I have the other one that I absolutely love. And this is one of my favorite stamps. And this is from Seth Apter. And this is um, ESA36, and that's this stamp right here. This one right here. That is one of my favorites. This is from one of his new releases from early this year. And I absolutely love this stamp. And um, so what I want to do, and this is what I I did with the other ones too, I want to stamp over the gold like that. Or, sorry, over the copper. So anywhere where I feel like it's way too dark, I can just kind of come in. And I can add this, like, little stream of, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. I can just do it like that and let it, yeah, there we go. I'm just giving it a tilt so that I can get it to run. And that adds that copper accent. There we go. So as you guys can see, it looks more organic when I do that like that. So that even looks kind of like a tree branch. So again, anywhere where I just kind of feel like I'm a little dark, I can just add like this little bit here and let it pull right off the side just to break that up. Or you can add it for accents. So again, I could do something like that here too where I'm adding and just letting it slide. Because again, I don't have the um, the tool yet from Tim Holtz where we're um, pushing everything with air. That's going to be so handy and really good for blending things. So right now I'm just kind of using that tilting method. So I just wanted to share that. That's why I'm doing this. And then right here I've got some mud. So that's kind of neat. I'm just going to kind of put like a vein if, you, if anybody knows about minerals and how they grow in the ground, they kind of like um, grow in veins. So that can kind of em be embraced. And same through here. Like that. I'm loving the copper accents. There. And then I have my liftings and I have that. So I'm super happy. Yeah, I, I find that the the alcohol, it um, thins it. Like, it really thins it. So I start it with a little bit, but then, and then, of course, I'm going to use my mister to clean up my mess. So I might want to do that while I'm, just while I'm here and I'm wet. There. I had to tape my corners down. Perfect. I'm not going to get my arm in that. <laughs> okay. So we've done the lift. 
And then we've added our copper accents. And I used, again, copper mixative. And um, I just, yeah, so we've done that too. We've thinned it out, and then I liked it thicker in some areas. So now that we have that pretty much done, we want to make sure that whatever ones we're stamping on are completely dry. We don't want to um, to lift them. And now I wanted to share um, Stays On and Ranger Archival. I find that Ranger Archival is the best inks to stamp these with when we're doing... Um, anything that's plastic or acetate or even glass, that's when you're going to want to use um, stays on. Ranger Archival ink is better to use with with um, the alcohol inks. When you're using stays on, it wants to pull everything off. So I just wanted to share that where you're not going to get that effect with Ranger Archival. And you can use the Ranger Archivals. You can use the minis. And I also have this one here, which is his... Um, his four pack of yeah I want the ground espresso vintage photo hickory smoke and black soot so I'm going to use some of this uh, ground espresso and black for this next one. Oh, that's a good method too Tammy and Teresa using a straw to move it around like when you blow through a straw that's a that that's a really good idea too but yeah, I have it on my um, my order list to order that hand pump that Tim Holtz has. So I'm super excited to try that. Okay, I want to see. So, yeah, and they dry really quickly, guys. So I'm super happy. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining. So I just used gravity for these guys. That's all I did. I tilted them to either side and let things sway back and forth and then this is where it's going to shine and I'm going to use black ink across here to add my accents and it's gonna be hard to tell tonight you're gonna see this once it's fully dry so once it's fully dry I will post pictures in group to show you guys what this actually looks like tomorrow because as you can see these were much much darker when I had started out um, initially so I just wanted to share that. So once they dry, and as you can see, I've got, you're going to be able to see the, the stamping throughout that whole thing. It's so fun, and I'm really excited to start using these on my projects. So now, I want to use... So I've done the background stamps with um, yeah, and I've got with um, Seth After and I have my Tim Holtz ones here. So I have this one here that says Imagine and I believe it goes yep like that Imagine. So then this is why I like to leave a little bit of a blank spot in between um, each of my tape pieces. I could have moved them closer. I just find it easier to stamp them when you sort of move them. So this has worked out perfectly right here. That's going to be like the perfect spot to get an ink stamp right here. So this one says imagine and that's going to be awesome. So if you guys can see that, I have imagine here now and I want one again. Put right back into my Right into my ink over here. Imagine. There we go. There we go. Then I want to use my template stamps. And this one is great for this too. Field Notes CMS 396. This has all sorts of small numbers and letters and stuff. This is what I did for the other one too. Anywhere where I had blue, I added this top part of this um, um, floral stamp. So I'll show you that. So that's how I got this when I did the top ones. So I can add this here like that. If you guys can see how beautiful that is. And then here, and we can add this here too. 
There we go. And maybe a little bit here. I like that with the um with the floral. Um and right here. There we go. And then I have the number 725. And I'm going to come right here with that one. Cross here. So now we're starting to come together a little better. So by the time you do a couple layers of your alcohol inks, and then you do a couple layers of your lift, and then a couple layers of your stamping, you're going to get all kinds of different stuff. And again, I could break this up here too and just do bits. You guys can see that. So the whole number is not showing. Or you could go like this on the corner on the side. Oh, that didn't have enough ink on it. Just make sure you have enough ink. There we go. Oh, we're not fully dry. See? I have alcohol ink on my pad. That's okay. If that happens, immediately take your, um, yeah, that absorbent paper towel and just get it off your ink pad. There we go. That happens. And again, we just stamp off on our piece of paper beside us to get rid of the alcohol ink that's on our stamp. There, we're perfect. We can go right back in. So again, I'm going to like that right here, 785. There we go. And as long as your ink is um, completely dry, you're going to be able to stamp no problem with your um, with your Ranger Archival ink. Stays on will take off the alcohol ink and your stamp won't actually stick down. Um, Teresa had used um, rub-ons. So I just wanted to share that. That's another option. I don't buy them because they're too expensive in Canada. We pay about $15, $16 for a sheet of rub-ons here. So that's not something I usually buy. So I just wanted to share that. So if you have rub-ons, absolutely you can use them. There we go. I have 7.85 here, and again, that's not fully dry. There, I'm just gonna rub that off over here. Perfect. And here's another one that says has a little number zero five seven one three. It's a little smaller. Here we go, and I can put that right here. And right here. And then I want to go into Tim Holtz Moth Study, CMS 436. And this is the one that I used the last time. This little moth here. And for this one, I like a stamping block. Because I want to make sure that I have a good, even impression. That's okay, Kim. Um, we always, um, I'm going to leave this um, video in group. And you're going to be able to watch it. And it's also going to be on my YouTube channel. So I just wanted to share that. So if you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, you'll see um, after the live, I will post it. Or you can watch it. On replay in the group it just probably easier on YouTube because in um, my my videos stay in one spot we're in a group that kind of get put all over the place like in the feed you'll lose them in the feed there and we have one of those here and I'd like to put another moth right there there we go and that's the great thing too and you're gonna get bits and pieces and things that sort of line up and don't so that's great I can tilt this to the side here and do that. And same with up here. We're going to do a couple of these right like that. And I'm going to get that, that lift, um, that lift ink that's going to be, um, sort of right through it. So I just wanted to share that. I'm going to get the, kind of the impression of both. And yeah, let's ink this up really good. And I can come right in here. Like that. Okay. Just stamping that off to the side just in case. 
here we go and same with this right here that should be better dried now yep perfect oh thanks Michelle I hope everyone makes some these are so much fun and it's funny because alcohol inks was that one product which we all I'm sure we all have where I did the whole well I don't really see you know the the junk journal aspect of it for alcohol inks and I was you know very much on the fence about them and I thought well you know I have everything else the distress inks the oxides the sprays the everything right and the stamps and the Sizzix and I'm buying so much stuff that it's like you know, this is probably the one thing I could, I could live without. Well, <laughs> until you see all the inspiration out there and Teresa and Tammy were playing with it. And I was like, okay, I have to get some too. And it is, it's so much fun. And what a fun way to use your, your tape and make your own little, your own washi tape. And I can use this in bits and pieces, however I like in journals. I could use these for layering. I can use these for, um, um, for collaging. There's so many things. I can use them in mixed media. So I'm not just um, limited. And then they are permanent. So they're not going to, to smudge or smear or any of those things. So super fun. Okay, I think I've overdone it now with, with this maybe. Maybe one here. You guys know me. I love the butterflies and the moths and the, and the grungy and the Okay, and I'm just going to add a little bit more of this here. There we go. So I have another piece of the of that. And maybe even here, because I don't really have too much going here. So there we go. Just kind of in the background here and there. Because you want your tape to kind of be full and to kind of... Um, complement and then maybe here but I don't have to see I can do it subtly where it's not um it's like a little little bits and pieces so that has that little bit of script and then this is going to have that little bit of script right there and same with here we'll do this right across here like that there we go so here we're gonna lift this up a bit like that Okay, and I'm going to show you guys. So we will have a totally different thing once this is all dry as well. So that's how I like to create washi tape using alcohol inks, lift inks, and different background stamps and focal point stamps. So it's just a lot of fun. And I'm actually seeing a couple of places where I don't have anything. So let's pick out a different stamp. Here we go. This one has a bird. Here we go. Oh, absolutely. You could, Timmy. And the other thing, too, guys. You can use your alcohol inks on your jelly plate. So I just wanted to share that. So there's all kinds of stuff that I'm going to be trying. And um, Joy had made some. Um, I'll take a second for it. Put that down. Joy had made some beautiful. Um, film strips out of acetate. And I thought I had them right here. Here we go. I have the 49 in market film strips. So these are amazing. They're like an acid, a type of acetate. And then each of the little um, the um, windows pop out. So how fun would that be to make the little windows and then these all like to change their color all in alcohol inks. So I have all kinds of stuff that I want to start trying um, using th these techniques. And then I'm going to um, be, I want to alter some of these from 49 and Market. I want to alter um, Acetate. I want to try doing all kinds of different things. And then Tim has a new product called Duralar. 
and it's amazing, guys. It is an acetate that takes alcohol ink, so it's not going to smudge or come off, because I don't know how well these are going to do over time, because these are not like an archival product, right? This is just scotch tape. But the Duralar is, is an archival product that will be good over time. And apparently, it's also heat resistant, so you can emboss it. So I'm going to grab some of that on my next order, and um, I want to give that a go, and we're going to try some really awesome new things. So this is going to just be the start of like a whole little mini-series that I'm going to have going here. So kind of in between everything else, we're going to play different ways with alcohol inks. So I'm super excited, and I've got 12 more colors coming. So I want to definitely um, pick up some new colors. So I'm not um, just limited to the six that I'm using tonight. Plus, I think it's going to be um, way more beneficial to have um, the hand pump. So we'll, we'll again, we'll, and we'll be making more washi tape too, guys. So this is just kind of the start of um, me experimenting a little bit. But, um, yeah, and then we can compare too. So once I actually pick up the, um, the proper tool to blend these, We'll see what the difference is when I, you know, compared to these when we first started to the ones that we'll be making with that, with that tool. So I just wanted to share that. This is a great start though. So if anyone has these and they have some nice stamps and they want to play, this is a great way to just make some, like some grungy tape for, for your book. And then again, guys, I've just been taking my stamps and then I've been stamping them off onto here kind of as I go, just to take the alcohol, the inks, and the stuff off of them. So this is like essentially like a little collage page that we're going to have when it's all done. Anything that's still stuck on here. There we go. And any lift inks. So I just wanted to share that. Oh, sorry, Tammy, the name of what, love? Oh, the, oh, yes, yes, the, um... Okay, alcohol lifting. Tim Holtz recommends the Viva V I V A. They're called Viva towels, and they're called. A, they're they have like a purple banner, a, like a blue package with a purple banner, and it says multi surface cloth, and they look like this, and then they have the little Viva symbol on them. But when you flip them the opposite way, they're just quilted like this, and they're thick. So, like, they're super absorbent, they're thicker, I would even say, than Bounty. And, um, not bad. Um, in Canada, they're $14.99 for nine rolls, and they're, like, massive rolls, and I've used them quite a bit. So, for me, I'm just going to switch these in the, um, in my craft room, like, just replacing the product I usually use for my paper towels. And these absorb the alcohol ink right off of the surface. So, again, you just have to, um, you have to take that and just put the pressure down and lift it. And I'm sure if I go back, sorry guys, here we go. If we go back and we can continue, as long as you got a clean spot and you can continue to lift anywhere um, that we have that lifting, it'll continue to lift the more you, the more you dab it. So don't try to wipe it. You just, you dab it. There we go. And then we'll see what these look like um, once they're dry. And the same thing with these guys. When they were dry, I went in and did more. So I could decide that once they're dry tomorrow, I could go in with my lighter. Like I went in here with my ground espresso. And then I did filed. So those are also from uh, the... I'll show you. These are also from here. Um... Yeah, filed. You could do um, other bits and pieces if I wanted to. There's all kinds of things that you can do. So these stamps are great. So I just wanted to share that. And then this one here was Moth Study. So that's uh, Field Notes and Moth Study. So the different moths on here. And then all these little, oh, and I used, um, yeah, it was this one. That one here that I used for... Yeah, little bits and pieces, like here and here. So again, just use the stamps that you have, and um, you can make yourself some grungy washi tape. Super fun. And these ones are, and again, same concept, guys, but very much different. You guys can see how I compare. I can compare. Here we go. There we go. 
These might even be a little darker in some areas. And again, if I don't like it, I can just lighten it with alcohol and I can um, add some more layers. So I just wanted to share that too. So there, nothing's permanent. The more um, blending solution and alcohol that you add, um, you can keep adding your layers to it. Aw, oh, thanks, Tammy. All right, guys, that's it for me for tonight. You guys have a fabulous weekend, and I'll see everyone back this week. And I'm hoping to do um, the other part of our mixed media piece. So we've done, I think, our first, like, eight, nine layers or so. And then I want to, and I have three pieces that I want to do. I'm going to quickly show you guys. It's just really far. There we go. So these are the three pieces that I've done. So this is the one here. Um, this was the first one I did. That's right. This is the first one we did. This is the second one we did. And this is the one that I did with you guys. No, I think that's wrong too. That was the first one that I did. This is the one we, this is the second one I did. And this is the one that I did with you guys to get our nine layers. So what we want to do is do another, um, six to nine layers for the second one. So we're almost 20 layers. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to do our stamping and we're going to do some inking and some more, um, some more grungy texture. We're going to use some Stableo all, we're going to use some paint pens and we're going to do some all kinds of, um, fun things. So this is going to be this week's and we're going to finish up this video. So what I'm going to do too, with the mixed media pieces like this, I'm going to do a playlist because I want to do, um, some other things that kind of tie this in with the different pieces that we're going to make. And then I want to continue with the alcohol ink series. So once I have a couple of videos, I can start putting them into, um, into that category. So then you guys can just watch them one right after the other. And then you guys are going to be able to refer back to them. So I just wanted to share that. And the other thing about Facebook guys, Facebook deletes my, my videos after a certain amount of time. And anytime they do a Facebook update, I've lost, Timmy will tell you, I've lost thousands and thousands of videos <laughs> and it's really sad, but that's what happens. So now I upload them to, um, to YouTube. So we have them and then, um, it keeps them safe and it also keeps them organized. So again, if you guys want to see the comparison here of where I did here. So that kind of has the little window thing here, kind of like that one does there. So I'm really loving the results and they're just very different feeling. And then they're going to be easier to peel up too, because they're not right beside the side of, yeah, I'm going to want to wait till, I would wait 24 hours before peeling them. But just to show you guys, there's this one here. So they are super sticky, sort of translucent, and then you can kind of see how that's going to look under a book page just to give you an idea of how gorgeous that's going to be so it doesn't even matter what piece you use so even if you made some guys and you hated half of it and um you hated half of it but you ended up with pieces that you absolutely loved and that's how I'm going to do this. You, you use the pieces that you absolutely love. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah, and then anything under, like if you guys can see this, where it says the index, you're going to, you guys can see in a lot of places, and I'm sure I'm going to get that here too. Just don't want to rip it. Got to go very, very carefully. Okay, here we go. That's what I want to see here, that greenish color yeah see look at that guys that is going to be perfect if you guys can see that we're pretty much translucent and we're seeing book page underneath or whatever else we're going to stick that to so that's exciting it's it's really amazing so thank you Teresa and thank you Tammy because if it wasn't for you guys I wouldn't have jumped on the alcohol ink bandwagon <laughs> so I absolutely have you guys to thank and credit for that and I watched a few of Tim's videos to learn how to use the products properly before I actually started and all his look more refined using that hand tool. So again, I can't recommend that enough. And that's probably going to be the tool that's going to be game changing for me. So with even without it, it's a great start and I'm happy. So I just wanted to share. All right, guys, you have a fabulous week and I'll see you all back soon. Thanks everyone. Bye.